<laughs> we love using this group as a testing bed for new tech. I hope I'm not committing career suicide here. Live production, three cameras running at the moment. More of an open source kind of mechanism. I have no idea. We're using cheap off the shelf uh, encoders. We get it to the cloud. Control side of it is sat in Sheffield. The goal here is to make this work on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet. The plugin will end up on um, GitHub. If we can get live production to a space where it's actually cheap and accessible, then it unlocks a whole load of creativity. Press subscribe. Cloud native media seems like the right way to go. David and his team have done an enormous amount of work to make tonight happen. You know, making these things and, and everything else, as, as well as lots of much more sophisticated tech. Um, not all of it worked, um, but obviously we had a good fun. It's a demo. It, it was experimental. Uh, some of it worked, some of it didn't, um, I think. Um, but David is going to tell, come and yeah, talk to us about how, how it worked and how it happened. And, um, you know... I think we're all very excited here because I don't think even I really know how it worked. So please, over to David. Cool. Hello. <laughs> so uh, yeah, David Atkins, 3A Design. Um, Paul proposed an idea a couple of months ago and uh, I seem to have managed to talk myself into supporting it and trying to uh, and produce a lot of this natively in the so cloud. It's my fault, is it? I'm blaming you primarily, yes. So... Um, so, I'll make the clicker work, one way or the other. Down. Hooray. So, yes, 3A Design, formerly a suitcase TV and uh, screen subtitling as it was back then. I still think that's a better name. We can't agree with their changes, can we? So, um, so um, we've been looking at live production and how it's done with big trucks of equipment and racks and all the other stuff that goes into it. It's big, it costs money, it uses electricity, it has to be moved around, it's expensive to run, it's expensive to buy. It's a bit of a nightmare, really. Um, so, cloud native media seems like the right way to go. Surely that's got to be the answer. So, we've been looking at how we could do that. And we want to do as little processing on site. We want to take as little kit as possible to where the event is being held. Um, we want to use the cloud to do the production and web browsers to control everything that we can because technology has moved on so far. Um, and we're a bit obsessed with containers, so containers have provided a brilliant way of partitioning this out. Whether we use Kubernetes or Kubernetes or whatever we want to call that platform, um, you know, we're looking at how do we use containers to provide a means of distributing items, spring, spinning them up, shutting them down, uh, doing upgrades. So um, we're playing around with this idea of a virtual digital interconnect. It had to be DI on the end, didn't it, really? There's no, no other choice. Um, so this is based around an API um, and we want to be able to make this work with anybody's product and we want as much of it as we can to be open source as well. So we're trying to be embracing that side of things. The aim here is to provide very fast communication between processes, containers, across multiple hosts as well as on the same host. So we don't want it to be trapped into one EC2 instance, we want it to run on as many as you need. We want uncompressed media because none of you want generational losses in your production processes. And we want zero CPU overhead because why are we paying AWS to move our data about if we don't have to? And we want low latency so that we can get the product out of the door as fast as possible. So the route we're going down builds on technologies like Amazon's Elastic Fabric Adapter, the EFA, LibFabric, which is kind of what this is built on anyway, and all of that comes down to things like NVIDIA and Mellanox's um, RDMA technology. So this is incredibly commonly available and it just works in the cloud. Not many people use it. Um, and it's a standard Ethernet technology. There's, there's nothing that special about it if it's been implemented correctly in your hardware. So no special purpose hardware that we can avoid. Um, so the goal tonight was we were going to have three or four cameras in the room. We do have three cameras running at the moment. Um, we had a latency on the encoders we're using. We're using cheap off-the-shelf uh, encoders for security applications, so they're just generating an RTP stream. We're feeding that into TX Edge, kindly supplied by TechX. Um, so that's how we're getting the data out to the cloud from the building to help us uh, protect the stream as it goes out. Better encoder, low latency. It's pretty much all of that's in the encoder. Um, we're feeding this up to our cloud environment, and I'm not sure where the laptop output comes in, but anyway, oh, sorry. So one of the things we want to be able to do is to 
compress this in various things. So we get it to the cloud, we decompress it, we process the whole thing uncompressed, and then we have multiple streams of content coming out to operators, a confidence feedback to the room, and out to YouTube. So that's the plan. Audio, today we were going to mix it on the same setup we had here, because we always had to have a backup plan for the day to make sure we could go live. Um, audio is coming into the system, but we, we're not actually handling it completely yet. And then we're using Singular Live, which you'll have noticed from the little logo at the bottom of the screen, um, which we're integrating into the kind of tools that we're doing as well, so that we can have a very uh, practical solution uh, for that. Um, and then there's a video switcher and a Kia or overlay engine to allow us to put the graphics on in the cloud. So, um, very simple model that we're working with, lots of inputs, as many as you need. It could be one, it could be 20, 30, 40. We're then doing processes which take the data that's coming in off of our VDI. I tend to call it a bus because I'm an old school hardware guy, but um, so the, the VDI bus of data is in there. That's all this low latency content. We pull it into a process. We then do whatever it is we do. That might be um, overlaying graphics on it. It might be changing the size and shape of it. And then at the output, we're going out to various uh, forms of transmission to get it to the other end. Um, so in its very simplest, we're actually still running these things here at the moment, so it is actually all ending up in our cloud environment. We just weren't happy with the stability of it to take it live. So, um, so we're putting that out. It's decompressed. We're um, time stamping that so we can then keep everything in sync as it moves through our environment. These uh, lovely cheap encoders don't really have great clocks on them, as uh, I'm sure various people will point out. They, but you know, you have to cope with what you have at the time. Um, and then that's just being fed into this um, plugin that we have. And that plugin is designed to work in a whole variety of applications. So we've, we've made that as common as we can. Um, so one of the things we're using for this, and I've, I've got some screenshots of where we were earlier today. Um, so we have a compositor that generates the view that the operator will see. So what we do is to guarantee synchronization of all the feeds when they hit your browser, we put them all in the same picture. So we're assembling everything time synced in our server environment in the cloud, and then we render that and stream it down to the client. So the compositor does that, and it just grabs as many feeds as it needs to, scales them and drops them into a picture. Um, singular, again, very simply just overlaying it. Singular gives us a key and field signal, so we can just overlay that on the signal as it goes through our platform. Um, so we had both the WebRTC streams we use for getting it to the viewer, to kind of the operators, so that's used to get us low latency. And then also we are possibly still streaming this now to an alternate feed on uh, YouTube. So um, I'm not sure what the actual latency on this transmission is, but ours came out about 26 seconds when we were timing it earlier on. So. Um, which I think is in the ballpark. My memory is it's between 50 and 30 normally. Um, we're using WebSockets as our control plane. So we have a broker that sits in the middle, receives messages from everybody who's transmitting, and various users of the system will have different topics they're listening for. So think MQTT. Um, this allows us to distribute the messaging, again, in a very low latency, very transparent way it will go through your... Um, firewalls in the business because it's just over HTTPS and nothing we're doing outside of the um, video streaming is anything other than HTTPS across the board. Um, this is actually the, the unreadable uh, view of it that we've been working to for the last uh, five or six weeks um, and actually you know, we, we had just about everything going it just wasn't sufficiently stable for us to use this tonight so we will come back to that. Um, the laptop that was feeding the screen here was being, in fact, is still feeding up through another RTP encoder, so we're taking the output of the laptop in for that. We would have taken the graphics in from Singular directly in the cloud if we'd been running on our platform. So, um, earlier on, this, this is six o'clock tonight, um, we actually had the, the view in Sheffield, because the guy who's working on the mixer control side of it is sat in Sheffield, uh, working remotely. So he had you know, three of the camera feeds, he had the, this, this feed on here, um, up and running in a web page. 
And it is a web page, even though it doesn't look like it, because we hit F11 and made it go full screen, so you can't see it as a web page anymore. Um, but the goal here is to make this work on a phone, on a laptop, on a tablet. We don't want to care what device you have. We don't have to tell you what to use. So, so far, it's worked on any platform that we run it on that has a modern web browser on it. Internet Explorer is, I'm afraid, out of scope at this point. Um, so, in addition, uh, I don't know if you recognise the shirt, uh, if your retina can stand it at all. Um, but yeah, so this again is early. This was actually uh, clipped out of the YouTube live stream that we had going out. But again, there was just glitches. It's not something we could have uh, taken to air in all conscience. So, um, so we actually got to this point here. This was always going to be slightly optimistic, but we have learned a huge amount from doing it and working with you know, Paul and co to make this happen has been really good for our people to understand the pressure on it because we've mainly got software developers. They don't know how a TV production works. They don't understand the pressure of the, it must be ready by five o'clock as much as you'd like them to be. They're being agile. They'll finish it next week, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So um, it has been a very valuable experience and I think they're slightly frustrated as I am that we didn't quite get there today, but um, we will probably update people later once we uh, have a slightly more robust approach to that. Um, so, yeah, next steps on this. The plugin will end up on um, GitHub. We've already done a plugin framework for FFmpeg, so we can actually make this work in FFmpeg. So, if you want to do whatever you like in FFmpeg, you can come from our environment and go straight back into it, or you can go out to any of the things that FFmpeg does. We even use it internally because it, it just works. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel? Um, so it will be there. There's a page up there. There's no, no source code on it yet because we're waiting to um, get that signed off from the FFmpeg side of things. They can be a bit picky about what they consider open source to be, so we want to make sure we don't upset the, uh, the guys over there any more than we have to. So um, that's a, a quick whistle stop through it. Um, any questions? Um, so you're, hello. <laughs> <laughs> what was your problem? Do you think it was related to bandwidth, or was it? Did you did you figure out what was your main problem yet in streaming? Uh, time, time. time. Oh, no, we, we were. It wasn't actually a technical problem. It was just. No, I mean they. At one point, it was working beautifully this afternoon, but they yeah, they rolled it across another instance and then uh, didn't quite get all of their commits right and. It wasn't the right size, so we didn't quite make it. So um, we haven't found anything insurmountable yet. Okay. Yeah, you can always do that in software development, though. There's, there's another mountain around the corner. Would you look to kind of expand this and build in some kind of redundancy, like hot failover or anything? Is that, or are you just building this for tonight? Uh, no, no, this is this is an ongoing yeah. thing. Tonight is just a tech. I, I've been calling this a technology demonstration rather than a product <laughs> launch, very, yes. very consciously, because it's not about a product launch. We, we're we aware of several use cases for this technology. Mm -hmm. This is a useful focus to bring it to a point where you can go, I've got all these bits that work. I don't think we'll sell this as it stands yeah. for a while yet. But along the way, we've built some really useful modules that can go straight into production. And so, are, are you locked to AWS or are you cloud agnostic? We are very anti being locked to anything. So we want to support any platform, including anything on-prem. So yes. we'll be looking at uh, MicroCloud very, very closely tomorrow <laughs> to see exactly where that takes us. And we, we can run this on a single host. So Docker Compose It Up will work, right? We don't want to nice. be built into something that makes nice. us only work there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many different use cases of this kind of technology being locked in seems stupid. Like you were saying, this is more of a tech. This is more of a tech demo or a sort of tech preview. Yeah. And uh, I think tonight's uh, quiz was quite successful, so I think we'll be doing it again. Uh, so hopefully you'll be back to help us with the next one, and so then we'll be able to see a technology preview we, at that stage as well. Yeah. We have two hundred and fifty question cards left that we didn't. Yeah. That somehow we got over ordered on, so we can do another six episodes quite easily, exactly. whether you like it or not. So. And so do you want it to be able to see how that's progressing? Yeah. 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 The previews are progressing with the next quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You mentioned RDMA, and that in September, somebody had an event where Ian Fletcher from Grass Valley talked about the Grass Valley AMP platform. Richard Cartwright from Matrox talked about their new Origin platform, both yeah. of which use Rocky, RDMA over Ethernet, to exchange uncompressed frames of video in, a, in an agreed format between 
systems running on their platforms, but obviously they're walled gardens. Yeah. Do you see this as a more of an open source kind of mechanism to exchange uncompressed frames of data across software systems running in a fabric? The, the only you, way I can see the industry will take up a technology is can they build something for it in principle, which means it can't be behind a wall. If, you, if you're in cloud technology and you take something you can't build for, what, what earth are you doing? It, it makes no sense. We, we haven't worked out a commercial model for the whole thing, but we want the interfaces to be open so people can get in and out of it. We don't want the traditional, you can't have that protocol because. We want, if you're on GitHub, you can go and build your stuff, right? FFmpeg will work with this. There are other tools that will work with this, and we're already working with several other um, suppliers. We've done an NDI plugin for it already, so we can do NDI now. We can do support the deck tech cards. So there's a whole raft of technology we can support and some of that we will supply open source, some of it we might not be able to due to various compliance things that get tied up around it. But we'll make our bit of it that allows you to take a frame of data and push it into the platform, open source on GitHub, right? If you do make that work, there'll be examples of color bar generators and things so you can actually see how to build something. So, But yeah, that's what cloud native is, isn't it? Is the ability to keep the platform open and stop people getting it. David. I've got two microphones on. David, thank you so much. Um, it's been fantastic. And thank you, of course, to our contestants, Jessica and Ed. Well, did, didn't they do well? So watch more of these episodes. Press subscribe on YouTube now. We love using this, this space, this, this group, as a testing bed for new tech. And this is exactly what we always wanted to do. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had a few events this year where we've done various things. Andy Beale did his thing. And... Um, you know, back in February, I think it was. Obviously, you had the Simpty thing. We've had a fabulous year testing out various different things. Me running around with a cheap gimbal and all, all kinds of other stuff going on. And and look, we, we, we don't get huge amounts of viewers on the live stream. We, we don't even get that many viewers afterwards. But the point is, we're playing with this tech. We're experimenting. And I think, you know, one of the things that I think we always thought about this event was that live is an exciting area. And if we can get live we can get live production to a space where um, it's actually cheap and accessible, then it unlocks a whole load of creativity. Um, and, and, you know, obviously you can do live on YouTube, you can do live on Facebook, but most of the content that's out there is single camera, VOD, monologue, uh, video monologue, uh, sort of VJ type stuff. And, and what, what I think we could do on YouTube and, and other, other channels do it with live stuff is, is really do some exciting live content that's, that's low budget, that's accessible to anyone to go and make, and we could really see some creativity coming out. Because like that, that live, real-time appointment to TV, we've seen Big Brother come back. I, I think there is a real, you know, there's a real craving for it, yeah? yeah? And um, there's, there's more streams, there's more everything out there. So I think we... It, exactly. You know, we, I, think, I think we're all interested in what's coming as well. So if you've got something that's coming, yeah. do, do come and show it to us if you possibly can, because uh, I think the, the more we share this stuff, the better it will get. I, just, I must say an extra thank you to, to Paul for being very accommodating and hosting. We've been here two or three times over the last week to do various <laughs> bits of tech rehearsal. We had a dress rehearsal on Friday where Paul learnt to not laugh at any of the questions or answers. And I, I think you should appreciate how hard he did that tonight. So, um, thank you. <laughs>